interesting though. I didn't know we he are, had like a, are, a tank in it. We are it. here. Sazaman me. Here we go. Hello. Beauty. Hey, what's up? What's up? Uh, here we are. Connect. Yeah. <laughs> it is. It is one o'clock. Holy it's fuck! It's fucking one in the morning. <laughs> hey, you yeah. Sleep? Can You're probably God. tired, right? No, I'm not at all. You are. <laughs> no, there's no fucking way, dude. Like, when I was going to bed, I saw the yeah, notification that you guys were starting at fucking 9 a.m. I'm like, are you really doing this? Yes, we're doing this. <laughs> Clearly, I'm, I'm like, under contract. Holy fuck, dude. I'm under contract. I gotta, gotta get through this. Oh, at please. least it's the very end. One more. Teach me, teach me about artist health, please. No, no. we're gonna <laughs> talk about Tom right now. Yeah, yeah, right. First, first questions first. What's the general consensus about this camp? What is it? What is the drawing consensus? About? General consensus of this cat. Yeah, is this cat dead or alive? That cat is dead. It is a stuffed cat. Um. <laughs> Yeah, I gotta go with Foo on that one. I don't know. I'm, t I'm telling you, that cat can't be alive. I don't know. I don't its know. head seems kind of like sturdy, you know? Like, really it sturdy. It looks well built, like it could take a hit. But, like, like I, mean, my cat, I have punched my cat. She can take a hit. <laughs> oh she's God. alive. <laughs> Artist health, everybody. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're talking about cat health for a second, but. Why is, it, why is the cat hanging out with Joe Rogan? Someone asks. Um, there's no soul in those eyes. Stuffed cat. The, the cat is not real and not in in hallucination. Um, okay. <laughs> I think the consensus is this cat is made up. It's actually Photoshop, but that's a real answer. Yeah, it might have been. I don't think I don't think Tom would get that close to a cat. Is all I'm trying to say. Wait, is not that a Is that? Yes, it's. it's Yes, Tom and his. Oh, that is Tom. Yeah, Tom. <laughs> oh shit. Yeah, it's not Joe Rogan or whoever you say. He's, he's hanging out with a stuffed cat. It's typical Tom. You know what I mean? Kills a cat, stuffs it, hangs out with it, posts it to I don't think he would kill a cat. That's why I think it's alive. You're right. He paid Jeff to do it. You're right. Look, he has shines. He has beautiful. <laughs> no, you're just adding that. Um, no, I'm just pointing it out. There it is, like. He's a dead cat. It's a dead cat. <laughs> I don't know, man. The more I look at this, the more I wonder how we came up with this question. <laughs> because I, that's what I'll be working on. Yeah. Oh, shit. That's what he's working on. Did this my Pico day entry? If I don't win, I'll stop using your ass forever. No. <laughs> no, Mogi, we need you. We need you, they bro. They really don't need Mogi. We need you. Yeah. <laughs> We're very <laughs> We gotta put you in every single background in Newgrounds. Come on, man. Come on. If that cat is dead, I don't care. Korea and Fran ain't fucking win. That's my question. No. <laughs> is, is I don't that know if I could happen? handle that. <laughs> Um, Anyways, we, yeah. we should actually start. Yeah. Wait, that we did actually start. Did we? Yeah. I can't that was tell. real. I've been doing that this for a really long time today. I can't tell when it starts and ends anymore. <laughs> I mean, I don't blame you. You can. Yeah, you can it's not right. like we, we should talk about <laughs> what we're supposed to not not this beautiful cat anymore. Sure. Um, what's it called? Uh, yeah. So I'm Foo Shark. This is Mogi64. Yes. Say hello. Hello. <laughs> um, if you're not familiar with the... Uh, I've been a digital illustrator for about... Shit. Probably like 10 years now. Uh, What about you, Mogi? You want to talk yeah, about Yeah, for it? like 5, about to be 6 years, I guess, since I started doing it for real. Mm -hmm. Actually putting effort um yeah <laughs> yeah i was essentially like after college for me and you you're a filthy in, dropout yeah in high yeah i'm a dropout <laughs> one year baby one year clean of school <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't have it any other way and that's called artist health oh, yes. <laughs> welcome to artist health we're starting off strong hell yeah avoid school drop out no um yes 
<laughs> As a moralist, sorry about that till the end. <laughs> um yeah, so the re when you reached out to us about like doing the, the talk or whatever, me and Mogi did like think of like oh like what sort of things could we talk about? <laughs> um I, we didn't really want to like go into like the usual th like we felt like you you guys are gonna get like a bunch of people doing character design stuff and like animation like we figured we'd talk about something that we bitch about a lot on our streams <laughs> yeah yeah um which is uh artist health <laughs> um and uh i myself I'm a fucking workaholic, like big time. Like I'm constantly fucking spending. I I mean I get up, I work, and then I go to sleep most of the fucking time. Yeah, same um, here. And it it can get a uh, pretty intense when like you're you're in the like focal point of just like trying to get work done and like not stopping. Um, just. I don't know, like when I start working and get into like a flow, I, I literally don't stop. Like I used to do streams where I'd be on for like 17 hours, like not stopping. My God. Um, yeah. And sounds it's familiar. Uh, sounds what? Sounds familiar. To who? Like, did you used to do that shit? No, considering Cynic still. Oh, That's a fair oh point. wait, that is a really fair point. <laughs> That's a fair point. 16 and a half hours, flat. baby. We're going for it. At 2 30, 16 and a half, and then I so can you're finally perfect, sleep. So you're a perfect example. Yeah, I know exactly how you feel. It. How do you do that? That is wild. <laughs> yeah, I used to do it and then I couldn't do it anymore. <laughs> um <laughs> which is what like one of the first like major problems that I had with uh, my health in general, right? Which was um I one day I, I had just been working for about fuck I don't know it must have been like one of those like seventeen hour stints or something. I got up to use the bathroom. I came back and like when I sat down on my chair, I it was like a pain that I could not stand. Um, like I couldn't sit. Like it hurt like bad. I, I talked to you Zenix, a little bit about this, right? Yeah, you're talking about yeah. your back, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's so, like, when I that's when back. I had you buy that stretching book. No, that was like this was uh, like years before. Like oh. when I started talking to you, I had um I had already dealt with it. Um, I was going through like another thing with my arms, which uh, is another thing that I'll fucking get into. That's right. Um, but uh, what's it called? Uh, so like I. I had like a shooting pain whenever I would sit down, like I could walk, I could lie down and be fine. But like the minute I sat down on my, my chair, that it was over. Like I was, <laughs> you're not doing any, you're, like you're not doing any sort of fucking work or anything. So like I was bedridden for like a week. Um, and that shit was rough. Um, it like, I, I was really fucking concerned. I was like worried that I'll never be able to fucking sit down and like, work again um and that was like my first kind of like kick in the face to uh why uh your health is so fucking important <laughs> and like taking care of yourself um like after that i started like uh like daily like going out to like at, at the very least like go walking for like an hour or two um and then uh what was the so the other story was like that the, the back problem was like the yeah, first yeah. thing that happened to me uh the next thing was uh it was actually last year in august which is when you had suggested like the stretching book or whatever uh, um it was uh there was a competition going on for what was it called the, the tezuka war the manga contest the the tezuka yeah, the Tesco Award, so it's like a Shonen Jump international like comic or manga competition or whatever. And I decided to enter, but I only had like a month to get it done. And uh, I was working nonstop every day um, trying to get, uh, what was it, like 
I don't know, something like 50 pages done with it. Yeah, like, it was, it was like, maximum 50 pages, yeah. Yeah. And during that fucking process, <laughs> I ended up uh, feeling some pains in my arm. And then I realized, oh shit, I really shouldn't be working any more than I am right now because it hurts like big time. Um, so I had to take like two breaks or two, sorry, two breaks, two weeks off from like drawing, which is again, like another period where I was just like, fuck, like really helping me realize like, this is like really important that I actually give myself breaks and like know what I'm fucking putting my body through. Um, like the back thing was definitely like an eye opener, but like that, that, uh, the wrist thing was the scariest one. Cause it's like. That is my drawing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but uh, what's it called? Uh, so yeah, then I I had talked to you about it, and then you brought up like how important stretching is. Uh, I bought that book, and I incorporated doing stretches like every other day, and uh, yeah, that helped me a ton. It actually completely like changed my fucking life are you serious um, yeah no i'm not i'm not joking like i it's i like you giving me that book really helped me out like or um damn it, like like it was insane to me how immediate the difference was after i did the stretches like just a few stretches like daily um like i wasn't getting the pain as often like it was helping me deal with it when i did have it like um and during during that time is when I like started looking up like a bunch of stuff like um how should I be fucking working as an artist like what do I need to uh do to make sure that I don't fucking destroy my body cuz like you like a lot of people think that oh I can like just give up on my physical health and just keep drawing cuz like what do I need my body for like it's not <laughs> I, like, I, like, there's a few people that have messaged me asking, like, um, oh, like, I want to become a better artist, blah, 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 and, like, what do I need to do to improve? And, like, now, like, the first thing I tell them is, like, make sure you're doing fucking exercise. <laughs> they're, they're like, no, yeah. we're drawing. <laughs> you're like, yeah. You're yeah, like, a lot of people are, like, a lot of people um, will say, like, oh, man, I was so glad that I didn't have to do, like, PE anymore and like physical activity. I thought I'd be able to get away with it. And like to be fair, that, that that was my fucking thought on it until like I started suffering like these fucking different pains. And I'm not even that well, you know. So a lot of people will call me fucking ancient by today's standards. I mean, even in your forties, it's just it's pretty. You you live twice in my life. Yeah, I'm forty. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Like so, you said uh, that, <laughs> I'm 40. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, what? I'm 40. I'm 40 years old. Yeah, no. Um, but yeah, like I'm, I'm relatively still very fucking young, and I'm suffering from like some like severe back problems. Like the back problems was essentially like uh, not hardcore sciatica, but like a fucking light, uh, light bit of sciatica where like even to this day like even though i do stretches and like get up like i still have like back problems uh, i haven't been able to like go have like a literal check-in to see uh what the problem is but like it, it sucks like i know that you know a year or two ago like i wasn't feeling it like this you know um actually let me link that book that you sent me oh yes i think it's like 101 essential exercises and the brilliance of it is it teaches you like how to do it properly what you shouldn't be doing while you're doing it and what it like helps with like how it yeah. how it helps the muscles you're working mm -hmm. and it no yeah it's really great yeah yeah i love that book yeah no i, I honestly like i i was surprised like how much it helped out and it's it's not something that feels like overwhelming to look at either. Like you said, it's like, it's very concise and like, this is what you're supposed to do. This is how much you should do as a beginner doing them as well. Like it tells you, you know, only do X amount. And if you want to start like doing more, you feel like you can handle more, you know, do this. 
Um, and like uh, from my perspective, just seeing you in like such pain from your arm, because this was at the point when I was like kind of just trying to get involved with the art community. I started noticing so many people getting like pains. Like I'd follow them on Twitter. They see you know their back is hurting. They see you know their arm is hurting. They see you know mm-hmm. like their thumb is out of commission. And and then when it yeah. happened to you, Foo Shark, it, it just kind of like it bothered me to the point where I'm like, I, I, I the only thing I know to do from working out and whatnot is stretching because it prevents injury and it helps extend extend your range of motion so i'm by no means a physical therapist but i just i figured this is the one thing i could do if you if you're experiencing like severe pain you didn't want to like go to the doctors or like or like anything or if you could go to doctors because i can't afford it i guess yeah I, i literally can't afford going to a doctor so it's like this little thing like helped out a ton um and so, yeah, like I put it, it's an anatomy and a hundred essential stretching exercises. It's a, uh, yeah. It's a, and it also, uh, in the back of the book, it actually has like an index for like, oh, if you have like arm pain, like do X and Y stretches and then it'll like refer back to like the book. So you can kind of hone in on like specific pains. Like if you have like wrist pains, like these exercises, if you have lower back pains, these exercises. So it, it's a really, really, I think they have another book actually i think they have like a few but like it's only fucking i i think i paid more than this i think i got it for like 20 bucks it's like 14 bucks right now <laughs> wow yeah it was like 20 yeah I bought it too so i i definitely highly recommend to anyone who's like working and i mean even if you don't have pain do this like, <laughs> yeah better fucking yeah avoid the problem. which is why we're talking about this because like it, this it might be a little hard for me to fucking draw and talk about this because this is something that I've become like really passionate about. <laughs> um, but I'll do my best. But like, after I started suffering the wrist pain, I'm like, shit, I need to take care, better care of my wrist. Like, what do I need to do? Like, what have I been fucking up? One of the major things that I like realized is this one thing that was always taught to me, and like. Like, when I went to college and my drawing team, I was doing, like, figure drawing classes, like, they would tell you, oh, draw with your fucking arm, right? Yeah. And it's probably a thing that most artists have heard in their life, like, oh, you're supposed to draw with your arm to get, like, a full range of motion, and, like, it, uh, so you draw looser. But none of my teachers ever explained to me that part of the reason you draw like that is to not destroy your fucking wrist. <laughs> Like, the idea is, oh, draw with your whole arm so you're not putting a lot of, uh, what is it? It's a repetitive motion. What is, what is that shit Yeah, called? yeah, yeah. It's like a, there's an acronym for it, but um, essentially, when you draw with your wrist, constantly making these, like, tiny tweaks with uh, your wrist, you're, you're straining it. And if you do that for, like I said, 17 hours straight without giving yourself fucking breaks, RSI, that's it. Repetitive strain injury. Thank you, CMDR hops. Um, when you don't take breaks, you you're gonna fuck you're gonna break something in your fucking wrist, and it's gonna fucking suck. Not being able to draw for like days, weeks, um, because of like a, a this this sharp ass pain that you get in your hand, and like that's only one of the things, right? There's also arthritis and a carpal tunnel, all severe fucking issues. So my problem. Like, uh, so my issue happened, I started doing a lot of, like, research into it, it was just like, okay, like, what sort of thing should, I, do I need to do? The wrist thing, or drawing with your arm came up, which was, a, like, a huge revelation for me, because, again, teachers don't talk about how, like, it's also, like, a, uh, a health reason that you draw like that. Um, so I would draw with my arm when I was in school, and I was using, like, a giant piece of newsprint, and using my whole fucking arm, um... But when it came down to, like, when I got a tablet, like, I got the cheapest tablet I can get. It's a small piece of shit, right? <laughs> um, what is it called? Like, it was, like, not the bamboo, but... The, the Intel Small. Yeah, exactly. And I've been using the Intel Small for, like, my entire art career. And part of the problem with using a tablet that's too small is you can't draw with your whole arm. It's really hard to because you're limited to on, like, the drawing space. So it doesn't even make sense to buy small tablets. Like small tablets are for like, if you're a graphic designer and you're not really 
like you use it for like very small specific tasks, but like to be drawing full illustrations like all the time on small little things, it's it you're you're destroying your wrist just to save yourself like some money. Um and then I moved on to uh like uh at that point like I bought a Cintiq. Uh, it's it's the first time like I work on like a larger surface and it's definitely helped me out a fucking ton. Um, but then looking into, like I said, looking more into how do you preserve your fucking wrist while you draw, there's actually really little information about this for digital artists. There are some people that like talk about it. Some other artists who have like gone into like make some videos to like make small tutorials, but there's like not a lot of like concrete information directly related to art. Um, which is why this is so fucking important. Um, so I got this antique so I can draw with a larger service. Mogi, like, I'm I'm talking up a storm, so if you feel like saying anything, feel free. I mean, like, like thankfully, I haven't dealt with, like, any physical pains, so, so I don't really have much input here. <laughs> Not yet. Not Hopefully yet. never. Not yet. <laughs> um, but, uh, so, yeah. Larger surface, so it's it's also really important to use like a larger surface. Not if you're gonna if you're gonna be drawing a lot, right? And you, like you really want to use your arm. Like getting a larger surface really helps um, when you force yourself. Yeah, like I would say even like the difference between a Wacom into medium and small is like insane. I I have yeah. a medium one, I, and I don't know how people can work on the small one. It's impossible for me. Yeah, I don't know. I that's what I did for ten years, pretty much <laughs> working on. I don't know how. Uh, me neither, and that's why my wrist hurts so much. <laughs> um, and, and like you said, there's very little resources or information out on this. Like, it's not a heavily talked about subject. Like, sure, someone gets hurt like all the time for art, mm -hmm. but there's little to do in means of like how to prevent that. So, exactly. Because a lot of what I would read is just like, hey, my wrist is hurting. Like, what am I supposed to do? Yeah, like after you're yeah. fucked already. Yeah. And then, like, someone will be like, oh, you know, get a splint and uh, I sit down. And the, yeah, that's just uh, what you're going to have to do for the rest of your life. <laughs> <laughs> like, holy fuck. Like, this is this is like really serious. And it's even crazy to me that like Wacom still sells things without that ergonomic idea in mind. Like, but Digi, actually, right? Like, what the way he works on his Cintiq, he doesn't have it propped up. He hunches over his fucking desk. Oh, like, yeah, like a monkey. You know? <laughs> yeah, like a monkey. <laughs> uh, but, like, you're constantly, like, crunching over your desk, and Wacom sells their tablets. Like, they, they have to know that people can't, like, work like that, right? Because they do sell extension and parts for some of their fucking tablets to be able to like lift them up and like set them at an angle but like the fact that they're not like just at at like the the very base level set like including that into the tablet is like ridiculous um the cintiq that i got which is a uh, which one is it? it's like a like the 16 hd i don't remember what the fuck i'll look it up in a second but like on the back, all it has are some pegs that you can, like, it's kind of like the keyboard pegs that, like, lift it up a bit. And then that's all that it comes with. I'm like, dude, like, this is just enabling artists to use your fucking products in this way that is really damaging to their fucking back. But, um, but they don't care. They just they, want your money, I guess. Of course, yeah. But, like. It sucks that, like, it's not something that's talked about more because then you see, like, people in the Wacom, t uh, like, forums talking about shit and they're just like, yeah, my fucking backer. Yeah, my fucking <laughs> Oh, yeah. man. It's like, I don't know. Like, it, it really sucks. And then all this information that exists is, like Mogi said, like, after the fact. Um, so you, re like, you really had to dig in to be able to find information on this. Yeah, like, and... In, in, into like other aspects too is just like oh just like people who get pain using a keyboard right because that's another thing i had pain not in my fucking drawing arm i also had it in my left hand which i don't draw with right yeah 
which is insane. In fact, my left hand hurts more than my right hand, which is also insane. And it's because, um, you know, I don't know about you, Mogi, but when I draw on a digital program, or when I used to do this, like my hand, my left hand would sit with the pinky yeah. on the control key, right? Oh, wait, and, no, no, no. I just okay. move my whole hand, which no, might be worse. I don't. No, that's probably better, to be honest, because I don't. Like, my fucking pinky stays on the control key, and I use that for every fucking shortcut that I can reach. And I'll, like, stretch my hand. Again, 17 hours of doing this nonstop is rough as shit. <laughs> uh, and I think that's what, like, was ultimately fucked up my left hand. Um, and what, um, So it definitely helped, like, looking into... Like, people who get arthritis or carpal tunnel, like, using the keyboards constantly, like, typing and shit. Um, but there's there's really little information out there. So, like, the, the main thing to, like, take from this is, like, you know, you're not supposed to be sitting at a computer for fucking n not even more than an hour. <laughs> like, you should, <laughs> you should be fucking getting up. I, I think what I've read, like, the consensus is on, like, sitting at a computer or just sitting down in general, like, you should be getting up, like, every 30 minutes, which is really frustrating as an artist, at least to me, like, thinking that, oh, great, like, I have to get up every 30 minutes when I'm in the middle of the flow and I'm drawing, like, really well and, like, I don't want to fucking stop, you know? Um, but you, you should be stopping every 30 minutes and like resting your hand you don't have to stop for like an hour or anything you just like a few minutes to like give your your arm a break not not just your arm but your fucking back your ass um and yeah like so after doing like all that research on like what i can do to like uh make sure that i'm not fucking myself up even more um i put in the money to getting my setup to accommodate for the type of lifestyle I have, which is, again, being a workaholic, right? So I went from, like, using a regular desk to uh, a standing desk, right? So, like, I have a, a desk that'll go from sitting to standing so I can switch every hour, right? It's like, oh, cool. I don't have to stop working because I can, you know, just stand up and then work. Um, and that's really helped a ton. Um, in terms of being able to take breaks from sitting, which helps my back. Uh, as for the, the drawing thing, there are exercises in that book that I use to stretch out my, uh, my wrist and my arms in general, my back, uh, every time I like to take a break. So I don't do every 30 minutes because, again, like I get so caught up in like working that I, I just don't take the breaks. Yeah. Uh, but I do it every hour, essentially. Well, it's definitely uh, better will... than what you were doing. So. Which is, yeah. Working... <laughs> Sorry, what? Oh, I didn't, I didn't say I didn't say anything beyond that. Um, but I will no, I will ask um what happened after the first time your back started acting up? Like when did that go away? Like how how long it, were you it, stuck it, with it, that for? Well, for like the, the shooting pain from me sitting down? Yes. It, it was a week I was in bed. Like, I was... I think that happened when Red Dead Redemption 3 came out, and I just played Red Dead Redemption 3. <laughs> Solid. And it, it, I hated it because I love working. Like, so being there sitting up and playing a game for, like, a week wanted to, like... uh Wait, not Red Dead 3. It was Red Dead 2. Red Dead 3. <laughs> I forgot that it's not 3. I'm old, remember? I'm like 80-something, right? It feels oh, like forever. Oh. And then and then, did the pain just go away altogether, or did you have to, like, ease yourself back? Into... No, like, the pain, like, so I was using, like, a warming pad on my back, right, while yeah. I slept, and, like, uh, well, no, like, just all day, I just had something on my fucking back to help. After a week of, like, yeah, just getting up and stretching a bit, like, a, the pain of, like, sitting down, like, went away. Like, I didn't have that shooting pain anymore. But I did realize that, like, my back was not the same. Like, I, I could tell that I would I was getting sore a lot quicker. Um, like, it, it really fucked me, like, ever since then. Um, and, yeah, like, it's just been, like, 
ever since that, it's been like I have back problems now. Period. <laughs> man, and it, it just all, man. it gets to that point because you mm-hmm. just don't know better. You yeah, just push yourself. And it, it sucks because there's like a lot of uh, so one of my favorite mangas is Bakuman. Um, and it's a it's a manga if no one's heard of it about uh actual manga cause, so like comic artists in Japan trying to make a name for themselves and it's a great series that you know is really inspiring to like oh work hard and like do all this shit that you can to like succeed and it's fucking great but there's this one chapter that really upset me um <laughs> where the main character who's the the artist for the manga he gets hospitalized because he overworks himself, right? Yeah. And I'm, when the chapter started, I'm like, oh, this is great. Like, they should talk about this because this is a huge problem in Japan, right? In that industry of, like, people overworking themselves. Um, and then when they go into that hospital thing, it's not like, oh, you need to... Like, everyone's telling the kid, like, oh, you need to take a break. You need to stop. Like, you can't keep working like this. You're not going to die, but, like, you're... You're, uh, you're going to be fine. Yeah, your health is at risk. And uh, a little bit of spoiler, but I mean, this fucking manga has been out for fucking ever. Um, the uh, the main character who's in the hospital, his uncle died from overworking himself. Um, and he goes out into the, off- uh, into the hospital, same sort of deal. He's overworking himself and they're telling him, don't do it. And he just pushes through, and he's like, no, 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 I'm going to do this. I'm going to, like, blast through this, and I'm going to be the hero sort of deal, right? And then people, like, clap for him for it. Like, the, the what was it? Like, the the editor-in-chief of, the like, editor. Turn and Jump. Yeah, he, he didn't want him to, but then he ultimately says, like, oh, it's fine. Like, work hard, blah, blah, blah. And the chapter ends. He gets his work done, and, like, he did it, but he was drawing in the hospital. <sighs> like, it it's not... It's like a really cool thing, like never give up and fight. But at the same time, you're you're only pushing people to like push past like a limit that we have to keep ourselves from fucking dying, <laughs> from oh. just ruining our lives for the rest of the time that we're on this earth. Is like no, now you have this problem for the rest of the time that you're alive. Yeah, because it's not just like oh, I got sick, uh, just give me a shot and I'll, I'll take a day off and I'll be fine. It's like you've severely injured yourself and, like, you're never going to be the same again. Like, <laughs> or you dead. <laughs> or you died. It's, it's over. It's really fucked it's up like, when you put it that way. It's not not drawing for a day or two is, like, way better than yeah. getting yourself on the point where you have to stop and drawing. Yeah. It, it it it's just ridiculous. So it's like it's one of my favorite manga. Highly recommend it. But that one part is like I find it incredibly insulting to like to artists and to younger artists who are like just getting into it. Like, like impressionable I, I honestly, artists. Like exactly. Um, and again, like I know that they're trying to like write something entertaining, and it's supposed to it's it's fantasy to a certain degree, right? But. It, this this is still talking about like a very real thing. Like, a lot of its subject matter is dealt in like reality. So the fact that they would fantasize like this one part of uh, like being an artist, like I understand it's cool, but like don't do it. Like don't 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 be that guy who's like fucking drawing in the hospital like when he should be resting. Like I know you think you can do it. I know you're doing it and it's working, but. You're only hurting yourself in the long run because that leads into like another problem. Like I love working so much that I hate watching like shows. I hate reading anything that's not me drawing. Like it physically hurts me to stop working, and that's not a good place to be. Like it's it's great to have dedication and discipline and like wanting to like work constantly, but when you can't like step away and just go for a walk or watch a movie or play a video game because you're so obsessed with working. Like that's not a good thing. Yeah. Um, yes, this is a fucking problem. I have that same problem. That's so why I can't enjoy mm-hmm. things. <laughs> yeah. Like I'm fucking jealous of people who can just like pick up a game and shit. I can't mm-hmm. do that anymore. Like I'm too used to just working 
As long as I'm awake, I guess. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. So you gotta yeah, learn I mean, how like to that's... step away. You gotta learn to detach yourself from your work. Cause... Yeah. And Mogi's better than me at it. Because Mogi at least fucking watches shit and like puts time to do other things. <laughs> because I'm forced to. Because other, like, the, the worst health issue I have, I guess, is just like my terrible vision. Like, my eyes tend to be pretty uh, red. I don't know what's the term for that. Mm, like, irritated, uh, I guess. Yeah, my, my eyes tend to be, like, always strained, like, irritated and shit. So, I like, I have no choice but to step away from the computer and, like, I don't know, draw on paper, do something else, or just fucking sleep. Go out. <laughs> Finally, get some sleep. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe because that happens, because I fucking lose sleep over, oh, I can finish this tonight, and I'm there until 6 a.m. <laughs> I finish it, but at what cost? Then <laughs> my, my eyes fucking hurt, and I don't feel like drawing anymore because I can't. Yeah. It's like, well, you gotta learn to take the L sometimes. Just be like, you know what? It's not gonna be worth it tomorrow. Just go to bed. Just <laughs> stop here. Do something else. Yeah. I mean, it genuinely is not fucking worth it. It really is. It. Um, you lose some more in that long term. Oh, yeah, for sure. Because, like, they always say, like, I don't know how true it is. But they always say that, like, you'll never get back the sleep you lose, right? Like, it's physically impossible to. Yeah. Um, I don't know how true that fucking is, but I'll tell you this. Like, after years of doing, like, the, oh, yeah, I'll stay up for fucking 42 hours. I'll be fucking fine. After years of doing it, sure, back in the day, totally fine. Now, I, like, the next day, I physically wake up sore. <laughs> like, I just... <laughs> feel like i don't do it often at all like i did it like maybe a week ago because unfortunately i had some scheduling fucking issues that like forced me to stay awake but um it was just like a 24 hour sort of stint and like the next day like i lifting my arms felt like a nightmare <laughs> like it was just like i don't want to move like i just want to die here please um and that's just from losing some sleep um you don't feel it now right yeah, you're, you know, you're a little baby at the age of 15, 18, 20, it's fine. But then, like, when you start hitting, you know, like, your 30s, I'm telling you, you will fucking feel that shit. Um, and it doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel good, like, having to, like, just feel shitty for a fucking day just because, like, oh, I wanted to stay up to fucking, I don't know, either draw or talk shit with friends. <laughs> Or, you know, run an event all day long. Yeah, I, I'm, I can't say I regret it, though. That's the worst part. So yes. I'm, like, I'm victim yes. to this actual actual thing you're talking about. It's yeah. because it's not tomorrow yet. Once you wake up, we'll see you say the same. <laughs> I'll feel sore it's all over. <laughs> you won't see Zenex for a few for a few days. Yeah. <laughs> I, just, I go to bed and never wake up, though. I'm just done. This is it. This is <laughs> yeah. my great hurrah. Done after this, at you know, least yeah, you died, but at least you know you died for a reason, yeah, for a good cause. Everyone's like, Can't wait to do this next time. Oh, he, little do they know, this is the last time. <laughs> oh man, um, and I think as artists, I think, uh, thinking about like, um, long term sustainability is important, like, oh, yeah. yeah. Like of you, course you have to think about what you're doing to yourself and like you can always be an artist you know but you can't always feel like healthy and you gotta you gotta be able to work with yourself oh yeah no yeah for sure because it goes from like oh i want to draw for the rest of my life and it's like oh my life ended yesterday <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah Wait, I, I made it I could only imagine the kind of like fear, like like palpable fear that you felt like when your back was acting up and when your arm was acting up, like how you how you felt about oh, like oh, yeah. like not being able to do art comfortably. Like that's mm -hmm. that's got to be scary. Oh no, it's incredibly stressful. And then so we we've just covered like the the physical pain, right? Cuz the physical pain of this is by far the worst, right? Or, well, I, I guess it's hard to, like, compare the two, but, like, maybe, maybe it's unfair to say that, like, I feel like physical pain is a lot harder to deal with than emotional pain, right? Yeah. Because that is something that we we also talked about. This is another thing that me and Mogi bitch about a lot. Um, 
which is the the emotional struggle of the artist. Mogi's a fucking god, so like he doesn't feel anything for some fucking. Reason. <laughs> He's a cold I, human I, being. I only care about things that matter. Yeah, and that's fair. And he should be like that to a certain degree. He goes a little too far sometimes. He goes a little too far sometimes. Sometimes, but um, so you mentioned like the physical pain like just how like stressful that is right like feeling like fuck am i ever gonna be able to draw again yeah. right which goes into like when you go oh i'm gonna pop into newgrounds or twitter and I'm like oh shit look at these fucking artists getting all this fucking work done and i'm here broken and i can't fucking keep up right yeah. a lot of people already stress about the what's it called the uh a good and um, the rat race of like becoming a famous digital artist or getting fucking followers and like making art a living right um so the the emotional side of this shit um people's obsession with social media getting likes getting follows getting uh retweets all that bullshit that in the end it, it's hard to say right because I'm on I'm the side where, like, yeah, followers and, like, retweets and fucking getting views is really important. A, if you're trying to do this as a career. Um, but when you're so obsessed with it that it's literally stressing you out. Um, it's just counterproductive and dumb. Completely, yeah. Completely counterproductive. Because I remember when uh, when I had started doing digital art like um when i started taking digital illustration series it was after college it was like there was a whole fucking thing that happened where like uh, i realized the school that i went to was garbage and i wasn't going to get a job working in the animation industry um i won't tell the whole story but uh to sum it up and this is real i went to a, like an art convention uh a cg convention that they were holding in fort lauderdale and uh I got to see all these lectures from like big companies like Activision, Blizzard, um, Sony. Uh, they were doing lectures about like shit that they do on the regular, essentially, and like me realizing, fuck, they haven't taught any of this in our school. And I've been there for like two years. Like I'm on my last year. I'm a senior. Um, but I, they, were, they had a job fair, and I was in a in in. I was just like, fuck, I have my portfolio here to show to this one guy who's gonna give me a critique. <laughs> um, so I might as well go to the job fair and see like what these professionals think. And I was in a long ass line for a Blizzard art director to look at my portfolio, um, and I just I did, I was oblivious to like what was gonna happen. So like I, they didn't pull you away to to like a side room to talk to them privately. They were just like in a line of people, like at any convention. Um, and I just, uh, it was my turn. There were hundreds of people behind me or like next to me, I don't remember. Uh, and the art director opened my thing. He looked through a few pieces and he immediately told me my work was trash. Not like nice. I mean, like he literally said my work was trash. Like this work is terrible. Like you'll never work at Blizzard with work of this quality. Like your anatomy is shitty and blah, blah, blah. Like he tore me the fuck up. Holy and it shit. didn't like, it didn't like break me or anything. Um, it felt shitty, of course, <laughs> but like, I I kind of walked away from it and I was just like, "Fuck!" Like, I I watched all these lectures. None of my teachers have like taught me any of this shit. This fucking Blizzard art director just tore me a new one. I like, ah, oh, fuck! I I need to <laughs> I need to start taking this seriously. Um, and that's when I started like really focusing on like getting better at illustration and like I I'll never. I'll never regret that guy telling me that. Like, I, I, I don't hate the guy. Like, I never thought badly of him. I'm super glad that he did, honestly. Um, but uh, as as time went on, like, after I did that whole thing, like, I was trying to perfect my portfolio in, like, a specific way that catered to the industry and, like, what people liked back then. Um, so I was making, like, really hyper-real paintings or whatever. Um, I was never happy with the work. Like, I was miserable working, and, like, a friend of mine had mentioned, like, if you're not enjoying drawing, like, I think you're doing this wrong, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, 
And uh, I guess I ended up getting into that story. But in, in any case, the point is that, like, when you, like, when I gave up on, like, or not gave up, like, I just decided I'm going to take a risk. Like, I'm going to stop working at Best Buy and I'm just going to do art and try to do art as a living, right? Because um, I, I had enough work that I was like, well, I can pay my bills and that's all that matters, right? Um, but when I started doing that, I became obsessed with follower count and like people seeing my stuff and, uh, getting likes and retweets. And I wasn't getting shit, um, mostly because like I was just catering to something that I thought I should be catering to. Um, and I became obsessed with that number, right? I, with follower account and like retweets and likes, uh, until finally I realized I was completely miserable to the point where like, I didn't even want to draw anymore. Like... I, I just, like, I don't want to do this anymore. Like, I was about to give up on the thing that I've been doing since I was, like, I don't know, like, five years old. Um, and then I, like, uh, <laughs> funny enough, yeah. it, it's always, it, it always feels stupid to say, but I watched an episode of fucking Game Grumps, right? Um, they were playing one of my favorite games, which was Super Mario Sunshine. And, like, I was really enjoying watching them play and maybe want to play, the, uh, like, Sunshine, but I didn't have a GameCube at the time. Um, so I played, uh, which one was, it's the cat one, Super Mario, which one? 3D World. 3D World, that's right. Um, and I genuinely felt happy playing that game, like genuinely like happy. And it made me realize like, this is what I want to do. Like, I want to make work that makes people this happy. Like that, that, that's all I kind of aspire to. And like, I realized the way that I have been going about like obsessing over people caring about my work and like getting views was only toxic to me. It, it was like forcing me to do things that I really didn't have too much interest in. It's not like that. I didn't like the work that I did. It just like, it wasn't the best for me. Like it wasn't, it wasn't what I like thoroughly enjoyed because I was more obsessed with uh, like other people being impressed with my work than I was with uh, with me being impressed with her, me enjoying what I fucking do. Um, so at that point, I just turned off notifications from Twitter because that shit is terrible. <laughs> uh, because a lot of people like to, uh, a lot of people go in, or uh, for me, right? I go into Twitter and it's just like, holy shit, there's like thousands of drawings being posted every fucking second. And people are ahead of me and people have uh, like so many more followers and all this shit. And I would get notifications on, from Twitter like, oh, this person posted this, this person posted this, this person posted this. And it's like, fuck, I can't keep up with this. So I, I turned it off and that made me realize, oh shit, like people aren't fucking posting every other second. It's just like follow a million artists who are all posting at, like different times of the day and it makes it feel so much fucking worse. <laughs> um because it's just like a huge influx of like all these people, yeah, uh, tossing art out. Um, so, anyways, the 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 main point. So on the follower account, uh, like Mogi or so go ahead, yeah. Follower account, I don't think matters at fucking all if you're not doing it for a living. If you're doing it for a living, then you can definitely uh, mm -hmm. feel. Just if I don't worry about it because well, it's your fucking livelihood on the on the line. But if you're a student, if you're just a hobbyist, you're you're putting your attention on the wrong place, man. Yeah. You're just gonna ruin that hobby for yourself, that enjoyment of art. Right. For numbers that you're not really gaining anything from. Besides like the satisfaction, I guess, of people seeing it, like the two seconds of happiness of like, oh someone like this. And then you forget. Mm-hmm. I think yeah, it's like, like, like something I, I started saying recently is like don't don't worry about your followers or your likes, retweets, etc. Like, worry about the get concerned about the money in your wallet. <laughs> That's what really matters. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. So I like are related to some extent, yeah, but mm -hmm. Yeah, because like the argument that becomes is like follower account likes and retweets are marketing tools period, right? They're not a they measure. They don't equal the money you'll be getting because, of course, only a portion. Yeah, definitely not. 
definitely not. Like only 10% of your audience will actually give you one, <laughs> depending on what it is, because sometimes you're really lucky and it's definitely more than 10%, right? Mm -hmm. um, because our, like this is just a gamble and marketing tools like your follower account, your likes and retweets are just ways, they're tools for you to improve your chances. They're not guaranteed to make you a success, period. Um, so it comes down to like, like Mogi said, if you're making, uh, art for a living follower count and then like retweets and, uh, likes help you get more visibility and hopefully bring you in more work. But past that, like they mean nothing. Uh, a lot of people like to use it as a way to value themselves as like a person. That's just terrible. Why would you do that? Yeah. Be like because it feels good like you get a high seeing that number right like the higher it goes it's like fuck yeah it feels good like i'm actually uh you know getting noticed but it doesn't convert into anything else like once that high of seeing those high numbers goes away it's just like you're left in this like depressive state like does my work even matter now that i didn't get a hundred tweets or, or like a thousand followers or whatever like you start questioning yourself based off of that number and it's it's not it's not a good way to value yourself as an artist. You should use it to value your visibility, right? Like you're you're doing these things so that you can gain more commission work and uh, well, yeah, commission work or donations on Kofi or Patreon, whatever the fuck it is that you're using to like make more money. Um, so it's it. It, it becomes a thing where like we or, like we see a lot of people who obsess is like oh i'm only like x away from like this number of followers or whatever and it's like oh that's awesome like like you you <laughs> exactly it just doesn't it doesn't equate to anything other than like cool like if you can see it as just a number and just like cool i'm just celebrating that i did it then awesome but if you become obsessed with it where you're like begging other people to like like your shit and retweet and like you're expecting other people to like do these things for you it's really fucking unhealthy you start putting these expectations on other people and like making assumptions of like what they think about you as a person because like oh they didn't like my thing or they didn't retweet yeah. my thing. i think i think a lot of the main stress comes from like beginner artists or like even even just artists mm -hmm. in general trying to make art for a living so then they, they think about exposure constantly. They think about how do I get noticed? Why is this not getting noticed? How come I'm doing all this mm -hmm. and, and uh, nobody's commissioning me? You know what I mean? I have a commission sheet up. No one's yeah. not getting nothing done. Right. And that adds to a lot of stress. That I yeah. Should. Yeah. That's why I say like I, I can understand totally from the point of view of someone who is trying to make it a livelihood. But I would say that's much more of a concern when... Again, when, when you're at a run food stage, she's like, well, well, you're an adult, like you're already working, paying rent, etc. So, so you have that pressure from life already. But if you're a student or, or a young person in general, you don't have to be going to school. Mm -hmm. That plan of making art a livelihood, don't get concerned about numbers just yet. Get concerned about getting good. <laughs> so by the because that's kind of how I treat it, and that's how like it sort of worked out for me. I would say, like mm -hmm. I've been trying to draw seriously since like I was fifteen or something. So by the time I was eighteen, I was already decent enough to get a few commissions here and there. But again, I was this was all on the side. I was still doing school. Mm -hmm. uh, but the more time went on, the more audience I got, the more, the better my, my skills I got. So I was able to be like, you know what? Goodbye school. Like, I don't need you anymore. Like you're, now you're being a hindrance to. Yeah. To, 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 to Mogi. Get out of Mogi's way, school. Yeah. <laughs> yeah actually, like, if you're young, don't worry about numbers. Like you still have a long way ahead of you to mm -hmm. build up all of these things that you're uh, aiming for. Yeah, you made a good point. It comes naturally, though. It's, uh, it's you don't look for the work. You don't worry about it. Just get better at what you're doing, and it'll eventually follow. Like eventually, people yeah, will want to yeah. support you. Just... I'll tell you this: how good you are sometimes doesn't oh. even fucking matter. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah, at all. At all. 
Oh, shit. At all. All that matters is that you're fucking doing shit. Like, if yeah. you're... Sometimes, like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, there's, there's very good artists out there, but, like, they don't draw anything, whether it be for, like, lack of um, discipline or or they just can't commit to finishing anything. And, of course, they won't get any notoriety because even though they're very good, they're not sharing their work at all. No one, no one knows they draw. Right, because they never but draw. It's someone who's like an, an amateur, per se, mm-hmm. like is consistently posting their sketches, their little doodles, they will get an notoriety because, well, they're putting the work out there. Yeah. It, the quality doesn't really matter in terms of like trying to get attention. It does to some extent. But it's not the end all be all for that. No, not at all. Again, all it's, it's all like you're just putting it out there and, and hoping it works out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no. Because again, nothing, nothing in this fucking life is guaranteed. Period. Yeah, you gotta work for it. And like, some I uh, work hard on it. Yeah, and there's that's no hard to, uh, <laughs> to me a little bit. Yeah, and not only that, like, even, like, obviously we're saying, like, you gotta fucking work hard and do the same. Just because you work hard doesn't mean you're gonna fucking succeed either. Yeah. Like, that's just the reality of it. Like, you're competing against hundreds, hundreds, thousands, millions of fucking people, right? Like, you need to identify, like, what it is you're trying to do. Like, yeah. If you're with your art, with what, what, whatever, because there's a place for anything. With everything so, I was saying, like, back in high school, I struggled with, like, comparing my work to, to other friends. Yeah. Because I had this friend, like, by that point, I couldn't even afford school, so I had to drop out for, like, a year or something. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I had, one of, one of my closest friends is, like, super smart, more than he's into science, like, he went on on science contests to Sweden and shit. And I was happy for him, of course, but I also felt, uh, uh, I felt bad about it. Like, oh man, like he's doing all this and that and whatever. Mm-hmm. And I was overwhelmed at his success, right? But yeah, then, you like, were being left behind. Yeah, yeah, like, oh, I'm, I'm yeah, I'm like, I'm, I'm going behind. Like, mm-hmm. I'm out of school, I can't even draw that good, etc., etc. I have nothing going for me. But then I started thinking about it, it's like, why am I even comparing myself to, to this friend, right? Like, he's a science guy, I, I'm an artist, like, our paths are, like, completely entirely different, and that should totally be mm-hmm. uh, taken into consideration when even thinking about uh, comparing yourself to, to others. And that goes for art as well, like, mm-hmm. like, like, uh, they, they're... Let's say, like, the, the usual portfolio ready, the industry standards for art, they, they usually, like, lean into the super realistic stuff, all greedy, grayish art station. Uh, and it's easy to feel overwhelmed by, like, the, the skill and talent of these people. But if you're not aiming for that sort of work, why are you even comparing yourself, right? It's not totally fair to be, like, I'm not as skilled as this guy yet. Right. But if they're producing the content that is like completely unrelated to yours, is it really even fair to be comparing yourself? Like, is it really worth the the bad mood you're putting yourself into? Yeah. Or something that's not really comparable. Mm-hmm. And that's something that you can control, or at least attempt to control. Right. You can't. You can't control anyone else but yourself. Like, you, you need to understand that, like, you're at whatever place you are where, like, you're at. And, like, just telling yourself, like, putting yourself down because you're not where someone else is, isn't going to get you yeah, like, faster. Yeah, it's like, that That doesn't matter. It, it doesn't. Matter, like, it doesn't, it's like, in the end, it's your life. Care mm-hmm. about it, not about someone else's. Yeah. Your own personal happiness is what matters, like, and that could be that the, your personal happiness isn't related to like how much money you make either, depending on who you are. Because and there's nothing wrong with that either. Like, if your goal is like I want to be rich, cool, like that's totally fine. Too. Go ahead. 
Um, but comparing yourself to other reasons and giving yourself unreasonable expectations is where it be like you have to understand what's a reasonable expectation and what's unreasonable. Um, like if you're comparing yourself to an artist who's been working for like years, right? Like perfecting their craft, like it, it's it's what. Like, is it even fair? You've been drawing for like twenty years, and you're comparing, and you've been drawing. You compare yourself to a guy who's been drawing twenty years while you've been drawing for two months. Mm -hmm. Like, it's not realistic at all. No. Well, there's even the young talents though that that make the older people feel bad about their art. Too. Yeah, me all the time, actually. <laughs> me all the time, actually. Um. No, but yeah, it's true. That that is a good point to bring up because, like, I myself, older artist, when I see like people like Mogi or like a uh, Digimon who's fucking insane, insane, right? really good. Yeah. If you haven't seen Digimon's art, I hope he's fucking listening and fucking hating me for bringing this up. Please check out fucking Digimon's work because he's fucking good. Um, but like, he's fucking incredible. Like, so and there's so many times where like or where I've looked at his work and I'm like, fuck, I suck, right? And he's so young, his back isn't broken. I'm this fucking old piece of shit. His back <laughs> is fucked. Back is fucked. Yeah, think, his back has to be fucked, that's I think, true. I think Digimon, uh, uh, not recently, but actually got accepted into uni at some point. Oh, no, he's been he's, been yeah, he's been in university for a while. Yeah. Okay, for a while. Yeah, he, yeah he's... But for what? Not for long. <laughs> yeah, he's gonna drop out. Awesome. I'm glad. I'm glad that's the theme we're sticking to for artist health. <laughs> Just drop. I'm telling you that. That's a marvelous story. Yeah, it's drop out of school, story. live under a bridge, eat healthy. Um, no, but like, no, seriously. So, Digi is like a person who, like, he's an incredible illustrator, and there are definitely times where I'll like look at his work and I'll be like, "Fuck!" Like, I'm nowhere near this. Like, what do I need to do? And it it's it becomes because like obviously we're 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 telling you like hey you know be healthy and uh don't be a bitch and uh <laughs> compare yourself to others we're saying this but like we also recognize that it's easier said than done it's not like an easy thing that you flip a switch yeah so like we go hours like talking about how good this is yeah we do oh. we suck a dick on the regular <laughs> um but like I have to remember, like, when I start leaning into those kind of, like, dark thoughts where it's like, fuck, like, I'm not as good as Digi, or, like, I'm not as good as Mogi, or I'm not as good as, like, any of these, um, like, amazing artists, right? Like, I also just have to, like, take a chill pill and be like, I'm not as good, but I can get there, right? <laughs> like, it, like, you have to, um, the way, your perspective on how you think about, like, these things will greatly help you uh change your your outlook on a lot of things right just by changing a few words uh, my ex-girlfriend and me used to get into fucking arguments about this like all the fucking time which is she she had this thing where it's like words are really fucking powerful and you need to like respect it like they have that much power over us right and it wasn't that like i didn't agree with her to a certain degree but, like, I would argue, like, how seriously she took words. Like, semantics was always an argument between us. Um, but I, I came to realize that it's true. Like, instead of saying, like, oh, I'm not as good as this artist. Like, instead of saying that, you say, like, uh, like I will be as good as this artist. Right? Like, they're good, oh, yes. but I can be that good. Sorry, well, what? Use, use your your angriness at, at this artist being so good at spite spite, yeah. <laughs> spite is such a fucking a weapon, you better use it. yeah just like yeah if you see my work or you see mogi's work or any artist that you fucking have a lot of respect for instead call them bitches and tell them they're terrible people <laughs> i do better than them don't yeah like nah bitch like you think you're good i'm gonna do better yeah, exactly. I remember I, I started drawing seriously because of spies. Like I remember back, back when Tumblr was alive, I found this good artist that was like one year younger than me. And it pissed me off so much. I was like, I'm going to be better than you. 
And here we are. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I gotta say, like, I probably the same way, like, all the artists that I encountered when I was, like, a young kid, it always became a thing about, like, oh, I need to get better than them. But I never thought about, like, I suck. As I got older, I definitely started feeling more that way. Um, but as a kid, I didn't really fucking think about that, which is interesting. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, as a kid, you have the confidence in the world. Yeah, yeah. And you gotta fight to keep that confidence. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can't help but be yeah. jealous sometimes, but using that as like positive energy oh, yeah. is is what works. Do you know? Yeah, exactly. yeah. Like, you, use it as fuel. Don't don't just cry like a bitch about how much how much <laughs> it's mm -hmm. better than you. Yeah. Yeah, put put your big boy pants on. Exactly. exactly. Quit being a bitch. Everyone <laughs> everyone is fucking crying about their follower count. Everyone's fuck well, not Mogi. Mogi's a fucking god and doesn't care about menial shit like that. Oh. Um, but everyone goes through these things like dude. When when you realize like all these artists, right? Like people with billions of followers and like who who make tons of money, like working on like art and shit. Like when you realize that, like, well, they, these are people too. Like they, they worry they about work. Shit. They work. yeah. Like it's true. They put in work, and you should too. Exactly. Like nothing's stopping you. And you know what? Like you could. Why aren't you? Because you're probably not putting the work. Are there other factors? Yes, totally. Yeah, but of course. More often than not, mm -hmm. it's like, well, you know, you, you could put off Monster Hunter Rise and go back to drawing, you know? Yeah. <laughs> you could, you, you could turn off the shitty game and just go and draw, you know? Yeah. And you know what? If you don't want to draw, if you feel like, hey, uh, I want to play a game more and I want to watch movies more. That's and totally you know, funny. Yeah. Just do what you want to fucking do. Like, if you're not trying to, if you're trying to make your life as an artist, you need to realize that you need to fucking sacrifice some things. And that's just how it is for anything, right? I want to yeah. be good at programming games. I want to be good at, like, flipping burgers at McDonald's. <laughs> like, <laughs> you make sacrifices to improve on the skills that you want to be good at. Like, but if you you're not... Get just for wishing you were good yeah, you won't get there just for like, oh, this guy's so good. Like, I want to be as good as him. Like, just saying those things. In fact, like, th there was a TED Talk about that, I think, right? Like, just saying things and like, oh, I'm working on this thing and I'm doing oh, it. Oh, yeah, that is like, it, gives it makes you your brain feel good. Yeah, you get the satisfaction of like, oh, I fucking did the thing. Like, like I'm talking about it. And then you don't ever do the thing because it just feels good to say that you're doing the thing. Right. Yeah. Or, or, or when you say like I'm gonna do this, and people are like, "Oh man, I'm so excited for you," or whatever. I'm happy that you're doing this. Mm -hmm. Your brain already gets the satisfaction of the feedback of the result of if you had done mm -hmm. the thing. But now yep. you got to meet it, so you don't feel like actually going through with it anymore. And then you just don't fucking do the thing. Um. But then you bring it up again, and you feel good again. And then it's There's fine. It's a cycle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you want to get good at something, you just got to do it. It's like, oh, but I want to play Monster Hunter Rise. It's like, you can play after you've drawn or, you know, practice the thing. You like, like reward yourself with these things. Yes. If rewards are the best way to go about anything, I work to reward. Yeah, that's how you, it's like... you primarily work like that, don't you? Yeah, yeah. Like, I'll play a game or something. It's like, oh, man, I want to play it. But I can't until like, I finish X number of, of drawings. Mm -hmm. So then I have a goal. Like, okay, I'll draw faster. I'll actually get to work so I can get to play this thing, mm -hmm. watch this. And it feels so much better when you actually accomplish this thing and reward yourself with that. And after you do it a few times, it just becomes easier, right? Because it's about making things like a habit. It's like another yeah, thing to talk about. Right. Are you gonna discipline yourself to not fucking turn on the shit again? Just yeah. stop. Mm -hmm. Just stop and fucking work. And again, if you don't like something that you're doing, like just don't do it. <laughs> yeah, it's not uh, you don't have to yeah. there's no to your head. Yeah, just think about like what you wanna do. And just and just do it. 
Like, cause it, like, honestly, I'd prefer if there was less competition out there. So, like, if you don't, <laughs> if you don't want to work hard and get better, that's cool with me. It'll make me look better. So, I'm, I'm fine with that. Yeah, we always have like this topic come up, but, like, there, there is this. Let's say, give an example. There's this artist, right? Who's really good. They have a lot of potential, but they don't do shit. Then there's two routes to take this thing. I, I get upset. Like, I am just sad. Like, I'm sad that these people like don't are not reaching the, their potential, right? But who is happy celebrating, clapping like a monkey that there's less competition now? And that's the way better way to think it, I think. Because like really like I've you know, I've had lots of friends who like work on art and eventually just give up on it, right? And I like I've tried telling people who ask me like, oh, how do I get better at art? And I'm like I push them like every day, like, oh yeah, like do a drawing and like I give them positive reinforcement. Or rather, okay, actually, this is a good uh, this is a good example, right? A uh, long time ago, I was working on a game project with a group of friends, uh, uh, real life friends from college, right? And it started off with, um, and I was the one who led everything because I was essentially put in the position. They're like, oh, you're good at organizing things, so like, you you lead us, right? And like, okay, I'll take the lead on this. Uh, and I would do my work and then I'd give tasks and then they wouldn't get the work done, right? So how would I react? Well, I would be an asshole I'd be like, dude, you guys aren't doing your fucking work. Like, why aren't you getting it done? Like, we needed to have this done by X amount of time. And then we had like a meeting where we talked about like, you know, what's going on with everyone like personally. And everyone was just like, foo, you're an elitist piece of shit. Who <laughs> fucking tells us to work? And like, you think you're so much uh, better than all of us and blah, blah, blah. It's like, okay, I can respect that maybe I was being an asshole. And like, I could see where I could have been a lot nicer, right? So I changed the way that I handled this situation, right? I was like, okay, I'm going to be really nice about things, right? I'm going to be very con um, conscious of the things that I'm saying. I was just like, hey, like, do, uh, like, these are the tests we have. Oh, you don't have it done? Ah, it's fine. Like, we can push it back to another fucking week, blah, blah, blah. And then on critiques, I just be nice about fucking critiques. And then, like, next meeting came around and, like, nothing's getting fucking done. Like nothing, even less probably. <laughs> and it's like, okay, I was a dickhead, nothing got done. I was nice, nothing got done. It's like, okay, so what I have to realize is that I can't control anyone. I'm just going to do my work because I want to get this fucking project done. And if no one else wants to do the tasks that are set to them, that's fine because I don't care anymore. I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to work. And I got my work done, but no one else kept up. Like, no one else was able to keep up with shit. And it made me realize that, like, it, it's that fucking saying, like, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't, like, force it to drink, right? Yeah. It, it's the same thing with, like, trying to motivate friends who are artists. Like, I can, I can compliment them and suck their dick dry. Or vagina, or asshole, whatever the fuck you have. And they will still not fucking work. And then I can be an asshole, and it they still won't fucking work. So there's no point. Like, it's just, it's great that people do things, but, it, it, like, you you can't just expect, like, you, you, you can't expect people to just be motivated, like, because you tell them things, right? Like, I can, I can look at anyone's art and be like, yeah, your fucking shit is great, but, like, they're not going to fucking move just because, like, I said that. In fact, it, it might be detrimental to them. <laughs> So um, what you're saying is I should comment, this fucking sucks, get better. Yes. I think that goes a, a, a longer way. That, or for, I think that goes further than being nice, yeah. Damn um, it. I don't really mean... That's it's not, <laughs> and maybe that sort of comment is like the natural selection of art. Yeah. It's like, you can't take that comment, sorry, you're, you're, not, out, you're not made out for, for this. If you can't take that comment and get better out of it, and then there's like you're not good at that. Yeah. Some, gotta, some people just wanna do this as a hobby. They don't wanna um, Yeah. And that's totally fair. Like yeah, if you just wanna do this for fun, then fuck it, do it for fun. Just I don't start like, complaining about <laughs> yeah. 
not having followers or making money doing it. Like you're not taking it seriously. So of course you're not going to get those things. Yeah. Uh, but uh, a little bit on the critique thing, right? Because that's another thing that like it is always like a sore spot with like art, right? Yeah. So, how do you critique and how do you give critique, right? Whenever someone asks me for a critique, I tell them up front, like, I'm going to be very honest with you about how I feel about your work based off of my experiences and my thought process going to like through my work, right? You have to remember that this isn't like a personal strike against you because I think that's the first thing people think of, right? Art is really personal. We put a lot of ourselves into it without even realizing. Some people do realize, but uh, like for a lot of people, they don't realize like how much of themselves are actually in an, a piece of art, even if it's something that I don't know, you would think is like really completely unrelatable, like, I don't know, like a fucking tentacle monster fucking like five chicks and a dude, like, You'd feel like there's like a huge disconnect from the artist, but like people actually put a lot of themselves into that work. So when you ask for a critique or someone says something bad about it, it can hurt because of like how much you oh, put in. Yeah, but you have to understand that like a critique is a is is for you to improve, not to tell you like I fucking hate you because that's what it hate. That's what that's what people feel like when they like to, it's like oh yeah look at my work it's like oh yeah I don't think that looks good I think it kind of sucks it feels like they're saying like oh I suck like I'm terrible it's like no like just the work needs to get better like you need to understand that there's a difference between like a personal attack and a and a uh, what so like a, and a critique I guess right so yeah, yeah, yeah. like if you ask me for a critique this isn't to get my attention. This is because you like genuinely want to improve and you have respect for my opinion or wh whoever other artists you're reaching out to, right? You respect their opinion as an artist. You like you recognize like, oh, they have a good eye. They have a lot of skills that I could probably benefit from. And I'd really love to hear their point of view on this. Um, so I let them know that. And then when I give them the critique, that's what it is. Like, I know a lot of people like to say like, Oh, there's like a ratio, there's like a formula where you just fucking, you tell them a bad thing and then you tell them a nice thing to soften the thing. It's like, no. Like, that's, like, <laughs> you have to be real with people. Just tell them what you think. And, like, if there's bad things, there's bad things. If there's good things, there's good things. Cool. But don't think that you have to, like, soften blows for people because you're... Yeah. It is detrimental, I think. It because is. It's like, oh, it's not as bad as I thought it was. Yeah. So like not really take it as as hard to hard, mm -hmm. I guess. Yeah. Wait, sorry. <laughs> You're fine. I think uh as someone who gives critiques and used to write really like in depth ones mm -hmm. to try to figure out like my feelings and shit. I can't yeah. draw worth nothing. So like I'm cool with anybody who draws something and I'll be like five stars and then I'll try to point out what I like about it. And then maybe mm -hmm. if I don't like something about it, I will I'll point that out too. Like but for the most part I'm just excited that people are like expressing their style for the most part. And if they do something right, I like to focus on that. More than right. the wrongs, unless they're like asking for like, oh, what could be changed, or if it's like blatantly obvious. Right. Like, so let me comment on something that you said. Right. You just said like, oh, I can't draw for shit. Right. Yeah. The only reason you can't draw for shit is because you're saying shit like that. Yeah. Oh, I know. I know. Because like anyone, anyone can do this. Anyone can fucking draw. It's a fucking skill that everyone has, or not everyone has, but everyone can learn and improve on. Right. But I see what you're saying. Like, yeah, you're objectively looking at things and that could improve and you say it and you speak your mind. You're being honest about it. And that's that like that's the most important part about a critique, people giving you their honest feedback on shit. And by the way, here's another thing that people like to shit on, right? Like when people give you critiques on your work that you don't agree with or like, oh, this person doesn't know what they're fucking talking about. They're full of shit, right? Like I don't listen to people that don't do art. Um, that's like something that I hear a lot where people just disregard like, oh, this guy, he's a fucking forklift driver. Like, why am I going to fucking listen to his opinion? Like, fuck him. Right. <laughs> that's not a good way to look at it because in fact, some of these people that don't have any sort of like skill with art, 
they're seeing something in your work. They have their own perspective on yeah. on uh, yeah. on way what. Better to get an outsider's perspective. It's way better to get an outsider's perspective. Right, because like it has less. It, it it gives you like a whole different side of a piece where it's just like, even if someone tells you like, oh, I don't like this, right, and then you ask them why, and like, and they break it down, like, some things sure could be like subjective opinions or like, oh, I just don't like, I don't know, I just don't like pervy drawings of girls or whatever, and like that's why I don't like it. Cool. There's not really anything to take away from that other than like, this is just their personal taste, and that's why it's, they don't like it. Yeah, it's like if um. If someone with an untrained eye can spot uh, an issue with your drawing, a legit issue with, with it, not not just bias, then it's a big problem that that should be fixed. I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, and like in the end, like you should be able to accept critiques from people. You just need to know how to like filter through what is usable and like what isn't, and anything that isn't, like you don't even have to get mad about it. You just fucking throw it to the side and yeah like, you just move on they were just giving their opinion whether they were being rude pieces of shit about it <laughs> like it happens but like you can't let that sort of shit affect you because like there are thousands millions of fucking people who are just ready to like shit on you just because like i don't know they're jealous or like they have nothing better to do with their lives than do it on the internet. um so it's like critique is I take it really seriously because like if you're asking for a critique it's because you genuinely want to improve. Like it's it's you're not trying to get someone's attention. You're you generally want to hear what they're what they think of your work. Um and you you need to respect that because critique in itself is an art form. <laughs> it really is. Um Yeah, I try to be, I guess. I don't know. I try, no, to, I'm be, not, I try I, to be I, honest for the most part in my critiques. And that's how you should be. Although recently, honest and respectful. Honest and respectful. Yeah, like if you yeah. if you're fucking up, like I'm not just gonna come at you, like <laughs> like with pitchforks, like oh I found my next victim. Like it's <laughs> it's just like I don't know, just you know, just tell them things that they can mm -hmm. improve on. Like especially if you see so much fucking art, like you can mm -hmm. just tell like where people can accentuate their style to make it better or what they kind of falter in that's like holding them back yeah yeah it's like most of the time if someone is criticizing you it's because they care <laughs> yeah. even yeah. though sometimes they might not uh, give out the best advice but it comes from a good place yeah most I can... times i would say because yeah there's just people that want to be mean to you and they are yeah <laughs> saying that there aren't assholes on the internet is probably the stupidest thing you can say <laughs> Yeah, assholes on the internet. I've seen them. Um, yeah, food draws them. <laughs> One um, or two. Uh, five minutes left. Uh, for questions. Uh, shoot questions quick. Shoot, shoot the questions at food and Mogi. It's just like you sleep. You Do know, it. shoot them with the question. <laughs> How many hours do you sleep? I sleep eight hours. Yeah, I try to sleep eight hours if I can. Um, I mostly work at night, so I have, uh, what are those fucking blackout curtains? Get blackout curtains if you're a fucking night person. Uh, How many years of drawing experience? Like around six, seriously? Yeah, I would say around six, seriously, but I've been doing it my whole life. But I only took it seriously like yeah. about five or six years ago. Nice. Um, my dog is a chihuahua. A weird dog in the chihuahua. That looks like a rat. He's fucking cute. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> I don't know. Is like that blood on his forehead? What is that? He just has just a brown spot in his forehead. Oh. Yeah. He's Scheduling would cute. Be a good habit to give yourself schedules when drawing. That depends on you. It's like a really personal question. Because everyone works differently. Like, I... I don't schedule myself for the week. I just have like, oh, a list of like my Trello for my commission board. I have my things listed and I just know I have to get at least one thing done today. And that's it. That's all I do. Yeah. I just um, have like, like, yeah, a Trello list or just sticky notes. Mm -hmm. And it's like, all right, let's see what, uh, well, what, what um, to work today. What's affordable today with the time? I have. Yeah, exactly. Like just do what you can.
what's your thoughts on separation of creation from the creator if artists pour themselves into wait, wait, wait okay what's mm -hmm. your thoughts on separation of creation from creator if artists pour themselves into the work yeah like separate the artist from the art so, uh, sometimes mm -hmm. you yeah, gotta do it i guess especially with, with social media and shit like there's artists are like they're very good and everything but their mm -hmm. personalities can be like not the most appealing or whatever and in that case if you just want to enjoy their work you're like yeah follow them on a different side where you can see less of their personality i guess mm -hmm. on the ground mm -hmm. system one on a platform like twitter where everyone can spot out their opinions that, that can be difficult to separate for sure, yeah. Mogi, what's your doggo? We already said. How big is your pee pee, Mogi? Too big. <laughs> Mine is like three inches, but it's like has the diameter of a Coke can. Um, That's unfortunate. I'm sorry. Mine is oh, the same size as Tom Phelps. <laughs> so that's impossible. There's no way. <laughs> I don't reply to it. Do like cats? Yes, I do. I have a cat. Oh, wait, how, how to reply to people's comments why on your works? I'm a little confused. Uh, you mean like who? Do, you mean people who comment like why? Yeah, yeah. Because. You just answer because I, I like it. Yeah. Because I want it. Because I to. Yeah, just tell. To that's, annoy you. <laughs> just reply with to annoy you specific. Yeah. Just. Just have fun like, with it. Yeah, those are really like the comments you want to just have fun with and just like, well, I mean, they felt like being an asshole and asking a question like, why? Like, such a fucking oblivious <laughs> question. It's so vague. Just answer whatever you want. Do you like cats? Uh, cats are nice, but I don't want them as a pet person. Speaking of cats, this guy is alive. This is the whole, the, this is the only thing that I'll be shown for the rest of not alive. Uh, do artists mind? direct approaches for critiques or advice that depends on the artist some artists like, hate critiques yeah some people yeah. really hate getting that question and to be fair like i'd say most of them probably just don't like it because like they're getting spammed with a shit ton of messages from a lot of people yeah. asking for it because critiques take time you can't expect like someone who like works professionally as an artist to take time from their day to like give you a very in-depth analysis of your work right like critique is all is like i said it's an art form in itself you're asking you're not just asking for like five minutes of this person's time you're asking for like probably 30 to minutes to an hour of them reflecting on years of their own personal experience on your work you know yeah. and then you're just one of like who knows hundreds thousands of people that do the same thing so you just have to be respectful and like you can try there's i don't think there's anything wrong with you reaching out unless you've seen them put like specifically in their profiles like i don't do critiques don't send me this shit. like do your research check if they're okay with it if they don't say anything about it you can be very respectful send them an email and if they read it cool if they don't read it don't start thinking that they hate you like it's probably just like they don't have the time to like reach out yeah yeah why did you use this guy to do health stream past midnight because me and mogi are psychos and we work at night <laughs> yeah it is i don't know they saying we would be starting a stream <laughs> this is really the time we stream so it's this is we're nocturnal by nature that's why but we only work yeah. you know reasonable hours we take breaks we exercise you know and we sleep eight hours yeah all right and then, I, like, I sleep sorry, at 4 a.m but i wake up at 12 it's like i get my nice eight hours it's fine. yeah eight hours is important um, yeah all right everybody is 2 30. <laughs> i've been doing this for a long time um i'm mm -hmm. gonna leave the chat open uh mm -hmm. the crowd kind of likes it like that i don't i don't know so i can just leave you guys in here right you guys will be fine um yeah. i'm gonna leave though um i'm gonna actually sleep my bed's right here thank you food shark and mogi we went over not only physical health but mental health as well mm -hmm. and a lot of it is just you know not caring about what other people think not thinking about your followers it's really just growing yeah. as an artist
Yeah. Mm -hmm. Self, some self love right there. And yes. also, do some fucking stretches before your fucking arm Hell gives yeah. out. Stand up, at least stand up every so often. Like 30 minutes is what's recommended, but we all know we're not going to do that. So maybe every hour, just get up and fucking be reasonable. Do just something. do it. Yeah. Yeah. Something. Because you don't end up like Foo nothing. Shark where you're you're broken. Exactly. <laughs> I'm on life support here, man. <laughs> I, th I was wondering what that beeping noise was in the background. <laughs> it's been flatlining a few times. During... <laughs> like, I keep talking, but like, trust me, like I've died a few times during this fucking screen. Fucking everyone, just draw art and be happy. Yeah, that's pretty and much what it boils down to. Don't compare. So. I've been fucking freaks and go to sleep. Yeah. Yeah. Go to sleep. All right, you guys. That was the finish. <laughs> Today was fucking our office hours. We fucking did it. Uh, it's been great, and we ended with a fucking artist health, which is the most important part. So thank you for everyone who's still here. Um, everyone's allowed to stay in chat. Uh, have a good night. And then Foo Shark. Uh, it's nice mm -hmm. talking with you again. Uh, Mogi, oh. nice, nice meeting you for the most part. Um, yeah. Good night. <laughs> Later. Good night. Bye. I bid you guys adieu. Goodbye. Later. Do you... Mogi, do you want to answer?